have that? You don't know or you don't want to say? So uh, we don't have that. There's well, I I don't personally know. Right. What does that mean? uh, There there, there are. Have you you asked, Brian? I think Wednesday you said you were going to look into that. So. So, Hallie, the the president doesn't check all of his HIPAA rights at the door just when he becomes president. The doctors uh, obviously share fulsome information with the president. The president uh, shares a great deal of information with the American public. We have gone through numerous briefings with the doctors, half a dozen memos from the doctors, his daily vitals uh, we put out yesterday. We've had briefings with the chief after interacting with the president. We've had Kaylee come out and talk. I am now speaking with you about all the information we can share. Uh, but just because he's okay, president so. doesn't mean he shares every single detail of, of you know, his entire life. But we, we do share enough information, oh, okay, certainly so. for public health purposes. Yeah. So is it it's a privacy thing, then, the reason why you're not saying the last negative test? HIPAA? So. So that that is one reason. Uh, the the fact of the okay. matter is, there's a reason to share certain information. It's to prevent further transmission of the virus. It's public health purposes, and that's what we're doing. Got it. But you just said a couple of minutes ago that you would share the results of this PCR test today if you get it and if that happens. So what's the difference? Why not be more transparent with people about this last negative test? You know there is a public health reason for this, and it impacts the people who were potentially exposed to the virus before the president was diagnosed. Why not be transparent about that specific so- very specific piece of information. So, Hallie, I, I, I stated we'll have further updates from the doctors. We've had updates from the doctors every single day. We've had numerous updates per day. And Nobody's some answered cases, this question that uh, I know, have they? We're extremely transparent. Uh, but I'm not sure why you're very you're focused not, on not that about question this piece because of it's not something, but, but it's not something that has uh, the public health value that the other information we're releasing does. That's why we're releasing information in the interest of public health. Okay, I think medical experts would absolutely disagree with that about the public health value, because the reason, as we've talked about ad nauseum, and as I think you know that that is important, is because it determines the potential exposure for other people. Brian, people that you work with prior to the president's diagnosis, you are not saying when the the president's last negative test was. Let's be clear about that. Let me ask someone else. But but the president had was socially distanced from people. Uh, certainly, you focused a lot on the New Jersey event. Everybody there uh, said he was no. never within six no, feet of anybody. No, you We have video. We know the president wasn't socially distanced minutes. from everybody. But but it, that's that, not true. Events, We've seen that, that, video that of within, the president over the weekend, Brian. We have eyeballs. Time. Got it. So as for the last debate, the seventy-two hour requirement to test negative. Did the president comply with that? Yes or no? Hallie. We are looking at how the president can get out there without transmitting the virus. And that's what we're going that to do. That is not we the question that is in front of you, Brian. The so you don't, do you not have an answer? I just want to be clear. I know. I, I, again, yes or no? Do you have an answer? Hallie, and if you, you don't, you, just say you don't have an answer. You've got time to talk to the White House about very important issues. Let's talk about how we want to uh, help people get through this uh, virus with more stimulus that the speaker seems to ignore. She's now talking about the 25th Amendment because she couldn't get the president with okay. impeachment well, that or is the not Russia actually hoax or anything else. Let's talk Brian, about because, as you know, issues. Nope. All right, Brian, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you again. Here's the thing. Coming on national television and so blatantly avoiding answering the straightforward question of when Trump last tested negative is only going to have the opposite effect that this campaign is intending. If they're trying to brush it under the rug or deflect away from it, then their adamant refusal to simply answer this question is only going to make people want to know the answer even more. But what's even more insidious here is why the Trump campaign might not want to say when Trump last tested negative. And that's because the answer may be that Trump tested positive before his debate with Joe Biden. In other words, If Trump tested positive before this debate, then he may have very well put Joe Biden's life in danger. And the fact that they are simply refusing to say if he tested negative prior to that debate really doesn't instill a lot of confidence that Biden was safe. To be honest, this goes beyond politics. If the Trump campaign knew that Donald Trump was infected with coronavirus and opted still to let him get on stage just a few feet away from Joe Biden, who is 77 years old, then Biden could have died. And the Trump campaign knows that, which may explain why they're so intent on refusing to admit whether Trump had tested negative at the first debate. I mean, listen to all the excuses we get from various officials. Kayleigh McEnany said, quote, yeah, I'm not going to give you a detailed readout with timestamps every time the president tested. White House Director of Strategic Communications Alyssa Farah said, quote, I can't reveal that at this time. Doctors would like to keep it private. And Dr. Conley, Trump's physician, said, quote, I don't want to go backwards. 
Think about how easy it would be to put this issue to rest and why they're all so intent on covering it up. And by the way, the logic that the White House is using to deflect here is completely unfounded. They claim that Trump's test results don't have any public health value. Tell that to the thousands of people who attend his rallies, where he himself may be the source of the spread. Tell that to Melania Trump or Hope Hicks or Kayleigh McEnany or Kellyanne Conway or Mike Lee or Ron Johnson or Tom Tillis or Chris Christie or Bill Stepien or Nick Luna or any of the other Republicans who may very well have contracted this virus from Trump himself. It's beyond clear that the White House may not think contracting this virus is a big deal, but try explaining that to the 210,000 families of those lost in the last eight months. Try explaining to them that it's not in our public interest to know whether or not someone is knowingly walking around infected with coronavirus. With that said, Biden was absolutely right to refuse to debate Trump in person. And frankly, he shouldn't go anywhere near Trump or anyone in this White House for the rest of the campaign. The Trump administration is not only responsible for the gross mismanagement that has led to more than 200,000 deaths in this country, but they themselves are carriers for this virus. They themselves are responsible for people getting sick. They themselves are going to have blood on their hands when we lose more Americans as a result of their willful recklessness. So while I get that Trump was upset that he couldn't have a regular debate, the fact is that he he brought this upon himself. He had the opportunity to get this virus under control. He had the opportunity to do the work and take the steps necessary to contain the spread, but he chose instead to spread misinformation and knowingly downplay the virus. So if he's unhappy with the fact that now, in October, we're surrounded by ever-present reminders of this virus, ever-present reminders of his own failures as president, well, he has only himself to blame. While you're here, please subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deeper dive into the week's biggest stories and interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Katie Porter, Nancy Pelosi, Cory Booker, Eric Swalwell, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.